It's always been a periodical debate on how much height can be either an advantage or disadvantage in climbing, and there could easily be a laundry list made of all the pros and cons of being short versus being tall. With World Cup competitors ranging from 4'10 to 6'3, it's clear that you can be successful no matter what height you are. However, one climber time and time again has used his height advantage to get to the top of boulders and by breaking the bait. I'm of course talking about Jan Hoyer. But before we see today's beta breaks, we first have to discuss an old Latin problem solving principle called Occam's Razor. Occam's Razor states that entities should not be multiplied without necessity, which is often paraphrased as the simplest solution is most likely the right one. How many times have you heard the phrase, just go up when you're stuck climbing? This phrase describes exactly how Jan Hoyer approaches problems when he finds some nice tall guy beta. Jan Hoyer is an incredibly strong climber with great flexibility and power. He might be the only climber that can go from rung 1 to rung 9 on the campus board. He is also one of the tallest climbers being 6 foot 2 with a plus ape index. Ape index refers to the amount your wingspan differs from your height. Typically your wingspan is about the same as your height, but in Jan Hoyer's case, his ape index is a plus 4 inches, making his wingspan 6 foot 6 inches. Now to really give you a comparison of how his height and ape index affects the way he climbs, I'm going to contrast the way Canadian's Sean McCall, a 5 foot 6.5 inch and a plus 2 inch ape index climber differs. During the 2019 Vail World Cup, Sean McCall shows the intended beta of going out right, then going back left in order to complete the boulder. The route setters intentionally put the zone, a sort of checkpoint to give partial credit and break ties on the right side of the wall, to encourage climbers to do the beta the intended way. Zones must be touched with control in order to get credit for it, which means no slapping as you're falling. Hopefully now heading out to the zone. And then he's heading up to that and volume. He's he might got remember, it. Yeah, you might remember from our tour where he was popping up to the next volume and there's that little pink screw on that he's aiming for. There it is. And let's see if you, if Sean figures that out. It's going to be a thumb. Ooh, let's see. It may be easier to grab it with the left hand, but it's probably easy to stay there if you can get the right. Oh, wow. Look at that. I thought about going direct. This, this is, I think, the same panel of what. Jan Hoyer, after getting the zone on his first attempt, conventionally, gets the boulder on his second attempt by skipping the zone and going directly to the finish hole. It out, move by move, movement by movement. Nice really work. technical, very, very technical climber. Oh my goodness, Jan. <laughs> and there is Jan Hoyer uh, making the use of his 15 meter long arms. Yeah, that was insane. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You know, I, uh, and he, I'm, I'm not sure if maybe that was at the route setters or what, but <laughs> <laughs> surely the wow. only person that can reach that. Uh, I'm just trying to think who's coming out later. I don't think anybody else can. That honestly didn't even look like an spam. option for me. In 2015, Kron lead World Cup in Slovenia. The semi-finals round, Sean McCall traverses outright, then back left in order to get higher on the route. In lead cups, however, there are no zones as judges just count the highest hold you reach, as well as the mandatory clips that climbers must clip for their own safety. Around to the right hand side. But Sean going pretty strongly. He laps himself onto that pinch and moves himself across the wall to take on the second crest. Matilda Becerra just taking her time, of which she has plenty. Getting yourself over that blue volume. Jan, however, finds a faster way to save energy and bypass holds. He's looked the most comfortable, you have to say. There's Jan. A very unflustered climber, no frills about him. Wow, hey, that's impressive. That is seriously impressive. He grabs himself straight onto that pinch. Circumnavigating the bit to the right which so many have struggled with he's gone straight up the first climb we've seen do it there's no mandatory holds in lead climbing you have to get the clips but the holds aren't mandatory so he is skipped by the holds on the right hand side and he's taking the direct route it's a great effort from Jan Hoyer he's got another crest to get himself over can he do it 
I think he can. The crowd here in Cram going absolutely wild for Jan Hoyer. As he grabs himself another clip. Julia Pfizer going, oh, as Jan just drops out. And finally, my personal favorite is when in 2015 Adidas Rockstar's semi-finals, Sean McCall shows how strenuous the boulder is and traverses outright to reach the finish hold. Jan Hoyer finds a more unique way to complete it. No matter your height or your ape index, you can always find a way to climb whatever you climb with the right amount of determination. However, if you have a natural advantage and know how to use it, by all means use it. Jan Hoyer has time and time again found a way to use his body morphology and straightforward smart thinking to his advantage and recently became an Olympic qualified athlete. Great job and keep sending Jan.